Why, hello there, and welcome back. For those of you new to my channel, I'm Mrs. O, here to support my parents, students, and teachers. Today, teachers, I want to share with you Whiteboard Chat, a free instructional tool where every student gets their own digital whiteboard and you can see their work in real time. Some of you may be saying, well, didn't she just share that in her last video? Well, yes, I did. However, we all like options, don't we? And you don't want to miss out on this one. And I'd like to thank a colleague of mine. She goes by the name Groovy Green for pointing this out to me so that I can share it with you. You won't be disappointed. So let's get right into it. Once logged on to whiteboard.chat, you'll come to this home screen. As stated right on its main page, we see that whiteboard chat allows teachers to draw and share their board as well as any selected student board for all students to see. It also provides a collaboration space where you can assign a group of students to work on the same board at the same time. So whether you're connecting with students virtually, face-to-face, -face, or simultaneously, Whiteboard Chat makes it easy to monitor and provide corrective feedback on all student boards. Other reasons why Whiteboard Chat may be ideal to use in your classroom is that it is F-R-E-E, -E, free. And you can also connect up to 100 boards at the same time. So I think that should cover about one or two classes. What do you think? <laughs> to begin, let's start drawing. To begin, let's start by selecting Start Drawing. When prompted, select Start Teaching, which opens up a board where you can create, assign, and live teach. Now we will walk through some of its features. On the left, you will find the toolbar, which gives you quick access to drawing tools, the ability to upload images, board content management, and lots more. One tool that I especially find useful, and I believe most teachers will agree with me, is found right here in the wrench. Clicking on it opens up a variety of tools. You have shape options, you can insert notes, add links, even a YouTube video can be embedded, compass, math symbols, and even dice. Can all be added to your board, as well as your students' boards. This bright yellow is really starting to get to me, so I'm going to jump right here to explain how to adjust the coloring and to personalize your board. Just click on the square to select your color and type your name in the space provided. Just beneath your name, you have a line style icon which switches between solid and dashed lines. And you also have a paint drop button which toggles between a pen and a highlighter. Here at the top is where you can rename your board. Make sure to include a subject and class name so that you and your students can easily identify the board. To add assignments to the board, you simply go here to the left where you have your tools and select this icon where you can upload files. Once you've selected the file that you'd like to insert, simply double click and it will automatically load. Keep in mind if your document has multiple pages, it will upload all of the pages. You can check down here and you can see that since this file had two pages, two pages are visible. Now, I definitely don't want the answer key in here, so in order to delete this particular page, I will go here, Manage Book, and I have an option where it says to delete page. Click Yes, and it'll delete that page. Okay, and if I go back and double check, page two is no longer there. Now that I have that uploaded, I'd like to provide my students with manipulatives so that they can complete it. So I would go right up here where the palette is, and then you have an option, a drop down. Now it's already um, set where I last had it, manipulative. So if it wasn't set at manipulatives, you can just either scroll up or down, search for it, look for manipulatives. Now there's an array of manipulatives as you can see here. You have place value blocks, you have shapes, a protractor, ruler. I'm just going to keep on scrolling just so that you can take a look at the different options that you have available. And if you keep on scrolling down, there's more. And here it is. I'm looking for fractions. And since this activity, they're going to be uh, determining if a fraction is more or less or equal to half, I definitely want to have a half fraction available. So you click on it and then you click where it is that you'd like that particular um, fraction bar to be placed. And since the first one is dealing with three tenths, you can scroll down, they can find the tenths, simply click and drag. But let's say they place it in one, you place it in one spot and you'd like to move it, you double click, 
okay double click double click and you have an option of moving it okay and another feature that's neat is that you can actually clone it so that you don't have to keep um, going back to the manipulative um, toolbar there you can just simply double click and you have an option to cloning which it does and you can repeat that one more time just clone okay and if a student does that they can automatically see that uh, definitely one half is greater so therefore three tenths is smaller I do recommend that prior to assigning work for students to complete that you allow them an opportunity to explore the platform work with the manipulatives so that they can become comfortable with it so as I walk through uh, these steps you can definitely uh, model this for students so that students can see um, where it is that they can um, get the manipulatives of fraction bars to do their comparisons if necessary and as I do this work students will be able to see it on their screen and everything that it's done on my screen they'll be able to see on their screen so let's take a look at it from a student's point of view and in order to do that you simply go up here to the right click invite and you have several options uh, they can scan um, you can um, give them a code and they just go to the website whiteboard.chat and they enter that code. However, if you're working from Microsoft Teams or perhaps uh, Google Classroom, you can simply click on this URL and paste it in the chat box. Students click on it and they would automatically be able to join your whiteboard. However, if you're concerned that a student may try logging on using another student's uh, name, then you can require students to enter their email or password and you can do that by going up here and clicking this first option only logged in users can join the board otherwise you can just simply give them the link okay now looking at it from a student's point of view uh, once they've clicked on the link you would open up to a page similar to this they'll be asked to enter their name click set name and as you can see their board appears their name would appear at the top and the letter S would signify their initial. And if I toggle back to the teacher's board, you'll see how that appears right here at the top on the teacher's board. M standing for me, Mrs. O, and then we have the student. So toggling back to the student board, they have the same capabilities of accessing the manipulatives. Just simply click on the palette and they can scroll down, choose manipulatives, and they can find the fraction bars um, just as well. One thing that students can't do, which I'm sure most teachers are grateful for, they don't have the ability to erase anything that you have set on your board. Keeping in mind that whatever is set on your board is automatically populated on their board. You can give them certain permissions to uh, duplicate, move the objects, but they cannot erase anything that you have set for example um, even if I double click on any of the fraction strips here I'm unable to move them or even clone them but notice how toggling back to the teachers board I can select the items that I want them to either move or clone so since the half is what they're going to be comparing everything to I can give them permission to <clears throat> let's say move students can move Now, toggling back to the student board, notice how now that I've given students permission, they can now move it. And here we go. They can move it around. They can move it out the way since they're done with it. And they can get ready to set up the next problem. Well, that's a wrap for now. And yet there's so much more to learn about whiteboard chat. In my follow-up videos, I will show you how to create animations, utilize the recording feature, have students collaborate all on one board, and how to create fun activities and games. As always, thank you for watching. To continue to support my channel, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, take care.